Take your family on a Lenten retreat at sea with Michael Voris and Father Z of the world-renowned Catholic blog, What Does the Prayer Really Say? Couples and singles should also cast off to the Caribbean for this seven-day trip. And those who have signed up are encouraged to introduce themselves ahead of time on our Facebook event page. To sign up for the cruise, please visit the website on your screen or call 805-526-6565. That's 805-526-6565. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Picking up with yesterday's theme, the heresy of Protestantism has spawned the destruction of a nation. Now, the calculus is really very simple, because Protestantism distorts the truth of Christ, it will result in the perversion of morality, which, when played out over sufficient time, will bring about the ruin of a nation. Now, case in point, just one central point. A Protestant pastor and I had a brief passing encounter at a radio station a couple of years ago. During our short encounter, he made reference to my Catholicism and then said, well, what matters is that we all agree on the essentials. I guess he was trying to be ecumenical or something. Not having really heard that before, I asked what he meant. His answer was revelatory indeed because it revealed a mindset of the very snake laying coiled up under the Protestant table. Listen to his answer. He said, well, we shouldn't waste time fussing over non-essentials. What non-essentials, I asked, having never even thought that some points of Catholic doctrine were non-essential or even Protestant doctrine for that point, for that matter. I think Martin Luther and John Calvin would take exception to this descendant of theirs who would be referring to parts or some of their teachings as non-essential. His response was nothing less than flat out stupid. He proposed that what Jesus said about divorce and remarriage was non-essential. Now, imagine this for a moment. Stop what you're doing for five seconds, five seconds, and consider the import here. Five seconds, think about that what Jesus said about divorce and remarriage is non-essential. Did your consideration carry you to the logical conclusion which must follow from his beliefs? First, God said a non-essential thing. Second, if he says one non-essential thing, how many more did he say that are non-essential? And if he did say more than one, how many more? And if he does utter non-essentials, how can we know which ones are non-essential and which ones are essential? Who determines which ones are non-essential? What's the criteria for determining? And on a philosophical note, why would the all-perfect knowing being blabber out non-essential things? What would be the point? This whole stupid line of discussion is the direct result of the Protestant heresy. And it has very real effects. It misleads souls in their ability to make moral choices. Moral choices that will determine their eternal destinies. This farcical notion that some teachings of Almighty God's are non-essential is the final destination of Protestantism because having declared that the church he personally established is non-essential, then how could they not arrive at the place they have come to now that other things he declared are non-essential? I was in a three-hour discussion this weekend with a young man who attends a Baptist congregation. When I asked him why he goes there, he said, he likes the way the preacher preaches. Eh, fair enough. A while later, he willingly offered up something that was decidedly non-Baptist. And when I noted that, well, your Baptist preacher isn't going to agree with you on that, he said, well, he doesn't really consider himself a Baptist. When I asked him what he thought of Calvinism, he scoffed and said he had bigger problems with Calvinism than he did with Catholicism. So, when we got into a deeper discussion on a more philosophical than theological level, but surely with theological consequences, it became clear he was just making up his own religion. I even said that to him. Now, to be fair, he wasn't saying that others had to believe his line of reasoning, but he was giving his line of reasoning the same equality, equal footing with any other religion, especially Catholicism, since that was the focus of our talk, and some Catholic doctrines. At the end of the day, for him, it boiled down to the simple point that he has the final say-so in interpreting Scripture, teachings, and so forth. Interpretation of the Word of God belongs to him and him alone. For him, in short, 
theological relativism. And in the Protestant world, of course it does. What Protestant can tell another Protestant that his opinion is wrong? Based on what? In the Protestant heresy, there is no final arbiter of the truth, no final interpreter. And for wimpy Catholics to refuse to talk about this or refuse to accept this horror and even more to challenge it is disgraceful. It's beyond disgraceful. It will be a point of shame for them when they stand before the judgment seat of God. God is truth and he desires and commands that truth be preached. It was the last thing he said as he ascended to heaven. Protestantism is a heresy because like all heresies, it distorts truth ever so subtly and prevents those who fall in its pit from reaching the fullness of the truth. And that there are Catholics who are not only aware of this perversion, but attempt to silence by intimidation and insult and invective other Catholics who speak from genuine charity for the souls of those infected with heresy is perhaps one of the greatest failings of the past 50 years. This false ecumenism, ecumenism, the promotion or tolerance of religious parity, has rained down moral terror on this nation and many other nations. Since so many of these religions offer competing and contradicting views of God, truth, morality, how can they all be worthy of consideration? How can they all be viewed as equal or equally worthy? They can't. You cannot have one religion saying the words of our blessed Lord on the question of divorce and remarriage are non-essential and another one saying well, they must be understood literally and lived by that. You can't have one religion saying murdering children in the womb is a viable alternative, however perhaps regrettable, while another says it's an unspeakable crime. Likewise with so-called same-sex marriage, in vitro fertilization, contraception, the list goes on and on. Yet we have Catholics, Catholics, howling whenever these discrepancies and contradictions are pointed out. You're being mean, you're being judgmental, don't talk about Protestants that way. They have drunk the Kool-Aid of the religious relativism because they have a misplaced sense of compassion. They're driven by their feelings and have switched off their intellects. They have as horrible a sense and understanding of God himself as the Protestant heresy that they have no problems with. While this is understandable owing to the fact that the catechesis of huge numbers of Catholics have received and still get pumped into them from clergy and religious has been essentially Protestant at its core, that alone is not enough to let lukewarm Catholics off the hook. They have eyes, they have ears, they can see parishes being closed down by the thousands, schools shut up, vocations at a point of crisis, family members leaving the faith in hordes, and these objective realities demand an honest, an intellectually honest evaluation. Any Catholic who steps back and takes a level-headed, honest look at where the church is right now, who ext extricates himself from that social milieu of let's all be nice and hand-holding and lovey-dovey, that person must conclude that the Protestant heresy has infected the church to a tremendous degree, much like Arianism did in the fourth century, and a massive falling away from the faith has resulted. This heresy must be fought against, and the wimpy response of don't hurt people's feelings has to be taken on and defeated as well. The church on earth isn't called the church militant for nothing. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. ChurchMilitant.tv. Join us in combat. Become a premium member today.